So taxonomy, it's really important when you're, when you're describing this to people who aren't taxonomists, and the analogy that I found most useful is it's going to the grocery store. So when you walk into the grocery store, the person has the thing that they're looking for, but the signs up above the various parts of the store don't say Lunchables. They, say, they don't say Honey Nut Cheerios. It's breakfast, it's snacks, it's dairy, it's meat. And the goal of that signage, that wayfinding, is to get the users from the door where they are exposed to everything to the thing that they are most interested in. And you translate that into a taxonomy, right? You think of this as just sort of the, a series of waypoints to get any user from the start of your experience to specific types of things that they are looking for. That's really fundamentally all a taxonomy is. Now, obviously, many of you in this room are professionals, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this slide. But when I'm talking about, uh, again, when you're communicating with people who aren't experts, the whole concept of mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive, the whole Mises principle, I always liken that to, well, it's a place for everything and everything in its place. It is uh, both obviously very important. Those are also the, the, the concepts that I've found most success at getting non-experts to understand. Uh, I talk about making the families a reasonable size. I, I work with a lot of clients who their existing taxonomy has, oh, 50 different child nodes under a given parent. And we talk about why that's a problem. We talk about the tyranny of choice. Um, and then obviously classifying two terminal nodes. Again, we're not gonna spend much time here. Uh, obviously what's in a taxonomy, the list, you need to know what the categories are. You wanna know how they relate to each other. There's the hierarchy. And then this is the critical one. It's very easy for an organization to sit down with the product experts that they have and create a taxonomy and get everybody to sign off on it. But what ends up happening is other people who weren't involved in the design start to interact with the taxonomy. And if they don't have very clear definitions for this is what is supposed to go in this node, then users just start to make their own assumptions. So a good example is when I used to work at Amazon, I did a lot of work with our taxonomy browse team, and we would create all kinds of nodes for you know um, twist drill bits or uh, automotive accessories, right? Those sort of junk drawer nodes that invariably filter into any, any taxonomy. And, because, and that was really the only information that third party sellers had to interact. So when they were trying to classify their product to the Amazon taxonomy, it, if all that they have is the node name and no metadata on what it's supposed to be for, you end up with a lot of noise. I'm sure everybody in this room who has ever shopped on Amazon has been browsing through selection and then suddenly, you know, you're like looking at, uh, you're looking at baseball bats and then suddenly there's a KitchenAid mixer in your results. That's because it's been misclassified. Um, probably because the node name is a little vague. So when you're designing your taxonomy, that metadata of defining the definitions is obviously that's what's capturing the intent. What do you want that node to be used for? If you let outsiders make that decision for you, you're probably going to suffer in the long term. 